Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Pick 6 Show. We are proud partners of Underdog Podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube. You gotta find us on YouTube. Search for Underdog TV. You'll find the logo. It's the uh, Blue Bulldog logo. Um, we could use your subscription. If you're watching us on TV, uh, YouTube right now, please subscribe. That's how we uh, you know, grow this channel. It's how we grow our podcast. And the more that we grow, the more content that we can create for you, the viewer. This show is all about gambling. Um, you know, We'll talk about maybe some teasers, some daily fantasy at a higher level, um, You know, who, who maybe the budget players are going to be. But let's kind of delve into, and, and Brad and I will make our six picks of the week. Um, a little bit further, but Brad, last week was a really weird week because Drew Brees and Ben Roethlisberger both went down um, with injury, which I can't remember an NFL week where both like were two like legendary quarterbacks, future Hall of Fame quarterbacks, both went down at the end of this at the like within the game or whatever, and it changes the whole landscape. I think of the NFL this season. What do you think about that? It does absolutely. I think it's a, a kind of a shame for for Big Ben. You know. They, They've been on the downside for a little bit now. Like, let's all be honest about that. Like, it's the the slope is going downward. Mm -hmm. The two best players they have are leaving because the quarterback can't seem to get along with anybody, and then the running back can't seem to quite get along with management, and maybe it was the receiver's fault, and then, okay, now it's all quieted down. Let's get back to winning. And all of a sudden, you're not even hit, and you're out. And it's right? such a so weird it's... thing. Like, I mean, I'm sure he's he's been dealing with the uh, issue for a while, but it's like a non-contact thing. And then you just see him grabbing his elbow, grabbing his elbow, and all of a sudden he's out. And I bet you, like, fans are just like, what's you know, what's going on? They probably what think... is happening, right. right? It's like it's bad juju, or it's just it, it. It's like it doesn't feel good in Pittsburgh. It hasn't felt good there in a long time. Also, it hasn't felt that great in New Orleans. Think about True. this. True. Last last year, for the first probably, I think it was, what, six, seven games, New Orleans was it, man. They were hot, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And correct me if I'm misremembering. After that, I mean, they're an average team that's just a little bit better because Breeze is so fantastic. It, it, it's interesting because they are a team— you know, we saw it with the Rams. I always like equated last year's Rams to that Packers team that started like eleven and zero or thirteen and zero. And whatever. the Rams did the same thing. And, yeah, That's and the degree. And they and they it was like a battle of attrition. That's why I think at the end of last season, when you and I were looking at the lines and we were getting into the playoffs, it's just like, you know, do, we did neither one of us thought Dallas was really ready yet for the playoffs, but we were like, you know, you can envision a scenario where Dallas's defense just comes in and shuts down. Like I think Dallas's defense was was Super Bowl ready. Um, I don't think their offense was. I think we're seeing something a little different this year. Um, but then, uh, you know, you look at a team like Chicago last year, their offense, their their quarterback wasn't ready, and I don't think he is this year. So, it, I mean, it's it's a weird dynamic, but this year, I've been, we, you and me, Brad, we've been seeing it all year. I, th- this conference is wide open. There can be like 10 teams that can well, make it the championship, man. And that's true, and, and I want you to think about this, is for some reason, and I – I, I got to plead ignorance on this one. I don't know even where I, I came up with this. I thought Seattle was going to be worse for some reason. This and now year? I think about oh, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I said that. I have to own that. I said that shit and I was wrong. Yeah, yeah. And what's weird is that I know how great Russell Wilson is. I think I just assumed that he wouldn't have the firepower around him. With a new contract, maybe they'd have to let some people go or something. Yeah, and they, and they didn't have the Legion of Boom and they, they still don't have it, but. Boy, are they playing well, and I think, you know, they're another team right there that could just as easily be in the Super Bowl right now, and and if I told you they would be, would that surprise you? No, I don't don't think so. I don't think it would. I mean, they... um... I, I was looking at, so like uh, on the Functional Sportsaholic podcast, and then, um, you know, we upload the segment on Underdog TV as well. I do a power rankings, and I was looking through, and I, I was primarily taking like 2-0 and o teams. I think maybe one one and one team made it, and I was looking at Seattle, and I was try, kind of struggling on where to rank them because I don't think I would rank them higher than Green Bay. Um, and, you know, it, it, there were some teams that played last week, and I think Minnesota is a good team. So when Green Bay kind of handled their business at home there, um, I, you know, I kind of gave them an uptick, almost like in college, uh, college sports, where if like a, 
you know, like if, if the number three and the number four team play, then the number three team might well jump into number one because of it the strength matters of the by way of opinion and power rankings it does yeah but you know let's be real the, the week two power rankings don't really matter but okay? it only matters but for <laughs> nerds like us yeah I know, it doesn't I matter know. any way shape and form towards the end of the year yeah so like i was i was putting in, in seattle where did i end up putting them um in fact i scratched it out a number of times and i have it at number six and i think i started them down at like number nine mm. and i'm just mm. like i can't really do that because just like you said it wouldn't shock me and this team, like everybody's talking about the Seahawks team being a, in, in a rebuild. And I've said it on this, po- not this one, but on our Get Paid podcast, I've said it before. It's like, dude, Seattle was in a rebuild last year and they made the playoffs, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, they came damn close to beating Dallas. They covered the spread. That was one of the picks we got right in the playoffs. Um, they came damn close. I think it was like a 22 to 20 game. And yeah. Dallas made yeah. the second round. Seattle could have been there. And Seattle could have gone on a run, um, you know, given how. I guess the Rams and the Saints were playing towards the uh, the end of the season because they hit their peak. And then are the Niners two and zero? The Niners are two and zero. Okay. And let me tell and you, I think they've looked great, haven't they? They have looked fantastic. And I tell you what looks what I'm really impressed with. And like we know about Garoppolo, and you know he's he's going to get better and better. Um, we know about this running game, but I looked at the stats. I think they ran the ball 42 times last week. And that includes maybe some some Garoppolo scrambles, but the bulk of it, like Matt Burrito, went 10 yards a carry. Um, what else? The uh, the guy they, they, they were like over six yards a carry for forty two attempts in the game, and they just dominated the game. They just beat the well, crap because, out of Cincinnati. Uh, Mike Shanahan is their he's their head coach Kyle. or coordinator. Kyle and Kyle, Kyle Shanahan. Shanahan. Apparently, he's a guru and a genius, and yeah. he just knows how to mix it up, man. Yeah, and he um, and then you know Garoppolo. To your point, Brad, last year when he was hurt, he just spent the whole time. Um, the whole time, basically three days a week, spending nothing but time with Mike Shanahan to, to learn the system and the why behind the system and all that. This team's going to get better, but what I was getting to is I think what I'm most impressed by is this defensive line. All these first-round picks that they've been putting into the defensive line, dude, they're, they're freaking good, and they have a rotation that's really good. I mean, this is like S- Seattle. Yeah, we knew about the Legion of Boom, but their defensive line back then was really good. This is the same kind of defensive line. We hear about the Chargers' defensive line. This is a defensive line like that. They're really good. So if, uh, so San Francisco, they can stop the run. Um, two weeks in a row, for it's escaping me who they played in that first week when they won. Um, gosh, it's not going to come to me. But uh, week two. Talk about the Niners? Yeah, the Niners. I can't remember. Was who it they, Cincinnati? No, that was who they played last week. I can't remember who they played in week one. But either way, they stopped the run both times. Um, and, uh, you know, this week they're going to be playing the um, – I have it written down. We're, we're going to be talking about them in a little bit. Uh, they're playing the why – why can't I find it in my notes here? The, oh, the Pittsburgh Steelers who are oh, coming yeah. in. Yep. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But I like what the Niners are doing. I think they made my list. Um, man, like three 2-0 teams in the AFC West, which you and I, you know, everybody was down on who said it, Brad, who said that we like the NFC West this year. It was all of us, baby. Well, not all of us, the two of us, I should say. Two of us, all of us, we're omnipotent. <laughs> there you go. It all encompassing. <laughs> all right, man. So why don't we just dig into some of the games here? So we're just going to pick six picks, okay? Okay. First game we have on our list is Kansas City. Um, Kansas City is at home against the Baltimore Ravens. Yep. Uh, Kansas City seven point favorite. So it's Baltimore plus seven at Kansas City. Brad and I are picking Kansas City. Brad, why don't you lead the way there? Why are we picking Kansas City? All right. Let me tell you why. Because. Um, the Ravens quarterback, what is it, Lamar, Lamar Jackson? Jackson. Yeah. He's been great, okay? But Lamar Jackson is Carl Malone. Carl Malone was fantastic and a Hall of Famer. Right now, not to be hyperbolic, Patrick Mahomes is Michael Jordan. So Michael Jordan always wins that matchup, right? It's just like a different level. It's like there's nothing wrong with Carl Malone. He's fantastic, and he always will be. But no one's ever going to talk about him in 20 years. We will be talking about Patrick Mahomes forever, and mm-hmm. the guy is on the next level, and I don't think he can be stopped right now. I just don't think so. Okay, and one more point is Baltimore has played really well, but they've beaten some pretty lackluster teams. Yeah. They beat them, but still not not very good competition. Dolphins and the Arizona Cardinals, and i got to say that the Arizona Cardinals actually um, looked more impressive to me in that game. So the, the Baltimore Ravens gave up passing yards to Kyler Murray, 
and Larry Fitzgerald and Christian Kirk, Kirk, who are good. They did a really good job of stopping the run. Well, Kansas City hasn't been able to get the run going anyway. So I think Baltimore uh-huh. will stuff the run again. I know Damian Williams and LaShawn McCoy are both on the injury report. We'll see, you know, kind of what happens, how everything shakes out. I'm sure one, if not both, will play. Um, man, Sean, every throw from that Mahomes is, is every some 40-yard dime. That's just like a flick of the wrist. It's it's really quite incredible. It's like almost watching young Aaron Rodgers in a way of just like how he can just make things happen and everything is right it. on the money. Right, and at every angle, at every speed, he could just manipulate it in every way, shape, and form. And, he's, and he sees it. It's almost like the game is slower for him mm-hmm. than everybody else, right? Yeah. Does it look that way to you? Absolutely. And it's it, phenomenal. It, it's incredible to me, this passing it, passing game. I think we said it last week, and we said it again. Um, you know, We'll say it again now. I just don't know how you stop it. I just don't know how you stop this passing game. Because you got um, Tyreek Hill went out, right? One of the NFL's best receivers, bar none, went out for the game or for uh, for a few weeks um and then they still just like put up like a 40 it's burger i think on, uh, on oakland like they uh, like uh, two touchdowns to their third string receiver basically uh demarcus robinson then they got um they got uh mccall hardman who i actually think is good he had an, a second touchdown he got one he had a second touchdown called back by a penalty uh travis mm-hmm. kelsey found the end zone sammy watkins for the most part was bottled up so you know that um you know, Oakland was trying to kind of roll coverage in and, and make things hard for Sammy Watkins. It's pick your poison, man. They've got speed everywhere. I just I don't know how you stop them. And and Brad, you and I both like the Ravens. In fact, I have right. the Ravens. Love the Ravens. I have the Ravens number seven in my um my power rankings. I have them as a really really good team. You and I were on them as a sure. you know as in our previews we were on them as like a future bet, and we still you know we still like it, but I just. Don't know. And and Brad, you and I were talking a little bit about um, the Rams and the Saints last year being at peak performance. I'm wondering if that's what we're seeing right now with the with the Chiefs. Are they going to just go on this run and then maybe fade in the playoffs, or can they keep it going? But they're just unstoppable. They're just unstoppable. Well, they are. They're, they're peaking. And um, we do know that that cannot last till the end of time. So eventually it's going to tra- you know, trail off. And come back down to earth. The question is, does it happen in five games? Does it happen in 15 or 25? I don't know. All right, right, Brad. Let's move it on to the second game, uh, Brad. So we have New Orleans visiting Seattle. Seattle's four and a half point favorites. New Orleans minus four and a half at Seattle, Brad. We are taking the Seahawks. Yes, we are. Yep. And um, and I'll I'll kind of take lead on this one to start with. So I've watched the Seahawks. You know, I watch every single game, um, every play, every game, every week, as I say on the fantasy football fallout um, series that we run early in the week. I, I New Orleans coming in, they're going to be playing a mixture of Taysom Hill and Teddy Bridgewater. They're going to try to run the ball. Um, Seattle's been able to stuff the run two times um, to start the season. Yeah, Cincinnati hasn't really gotten their run game going. Pittsburgh, you know, they've kind of been ignoring James Conner to start the year. But I think they're going to be able to kind of bottle up um, Kamara. So you basically have Taysom Hill, and they're going to try to introduce some Wildcat stuff. I just don't think Seattle at home with as good as Russell Wilson is playing. And I think, Brad, that this receiving core that Russell Wilson had is the best that he's ever had. I like DK Metcalf. I love, <clears throat> excuse me, I love his um, his uh, chemistry with Tyler Lockett. Will Disley, he throws to his tight end in the goal line. This dude gets a lot of touchdowns when he plays, uh, Will Disley. And then they got another guy, um, I can't remember, it's like Malik Turner or something like that. He looks really good. So uh-huh. you have Russell Wilson, the offensive line looks a little bit better, and we know they can run the ball with Chris Carson. And Russell Wilson just, you know, I think he was like 29-35 of 35 for three touchdowns against Pittsburgh's defense last week at Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, you can't really call Russell Wilson a, a home-only quarterback with those kinds of numbers. So I, I'm on Seattle, man, for, for sure. He's a Mac, dude. Yeah. He's a Mac. He's solid. He's thick. He's strong. He's smart. He's sensible. The guy's got it all, dude. He he's just, sensitive. And he's sensitive. Yeah, he gives hugs. He gives, you know, Yeah, he's hands. got sensibilities. Yeah. yeah. The guy, he, he looks like he smells like, like cocoa butter and success. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I don't. Just, I don't know uh, what that means. I just want to take a big whiff of his neck and just carry that with me for a week. <laughs> you know? 
I don't know what it is about him, man. He just knows what's up. He's got his head in the right spot. Yeah, he always avoids big hits. He, you know, at the end of the game, Pittsburgh was, you know, coming back. They were, uh, they were one of our, by the way, our misses last week. Unfortunately, Ben Ben Roethlisberger goes out with a lead, and then they come back, and Mason Rudolph has to carry us through. So we knew. Yeah, we were gonna... well, that was that was yeah. a hard that hard, happens. That's a bad turn. That that happens. That right? happens, man. Oh. It's just that's just bad luck when your backup quarterback's playing a team like Seattle and has to come back and cover, I think, like a four- or five-point spread or whatever it was when we bet it. Yeah, we knew that was lost. But... It just makes me think – Russell Wilson makes me think about Baker Mayfield. And I, I just – I see him on all these commercials and all the stupid-ass, like, ads he does. Like, the, the Baker? model – Yeah. It's like all the – just all the BS he does before he's even won anything or deserved anything. And Russell Wilson has never done any of that, mm-hmm. you know? He's on something now. He's he's dressed up in uh, as if he had a daughter that was um, playing tea with him or something. He's dressed up in like necklaces Uh-oh. or something like that. He's doing. He's he's on a little bit more this year, but uh-huh. yeah, I hear you. He's not taking pictures with his shirt off with a like a cobra in the background or whatever he was doing. He's year. such a turd, that guy. I like him. He's going to be the next Cam Newton. I'm telling you. No, Cam I Newton, think... eight straight losses, one of my favorite stats of all time. Let's talk about it. <laughs> well, let's talk about it. Cam Newton, man, he's not running the ball. He's not running the ball. If, if Cam Newton is not running the ball at the quarterback position, then what is he? Well, what he is is a, a ninth-year older guy now. He's um... that, that never had a lot of integrity. He never had a lot of smarts, let's be honest. What he did have was ultimate athleticism. And how long is that going to last you? Well, I think not very I, long. I think Carolina at this point is going to start running because it, look, you can't go zero and two. They blew that game against Tampa Bay. They had fourth and a half yard, and they could have just snuck Cam Newton. But they're in this like this kick. We don't want to hurt Cam Newton, and I know he's been injured. I've ranted about this this week already. But you can't you can't do that, man. You can't go down zero and two. Two losses at home, conference losses. One's a conference loss to the Rams. One's a division loss to the Bucks. Not good enough, man. That was um, not good enough. Yeah, so that that kind of I think kind of screwed their Cut season. That stupid ass hair and take no, off. No, 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 no. I'm I'm with his hair. I like his hair. No, I like his no, hair. No, no, yo. I'm all about fashion and expressing yourself with individualities mm-hmm. and all of that. Take off that silly ass scarf, man. What is that thing? Come on, dude. You're a caricature. I like his hair though. And we're back after a after I cut a rant from Brad out of this podcast and this show. Um, <laughs> let's just move it on since you're already talking about Baker Mayfield. We have the Rams minus three at Cleveland. Brad, you and I are both yeah. on the Rams, and we oh, like yeah. this one a lot. Why don't you start with that? Okay. Um, without tearing into Baker Mayfield, because that's too easy at this point. Right. I think that the the – Brown's problem is the best player on their team is a wide receiver, and I don't think that's the formula. And uh, I've been using the same analogy all year. It's like uh, the cherry is the best part of the dessert. The Mm. cherry on top is so tasty and so sugary and so perfect, but there's only one of them, and the rest of the cake, it tastes like sawdust, (laughs) and the ingredients are just not there. That's a pretty terrible cake, man. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You get to that cherry on top, you're enjoying it for a split second, but the whole thing's not going to taste very well. Yeah. I think, you see, Odell Beckham, I actually disagree. Now, I think the the world would basically agree with what you just said, but I think Nick Chubb is the best player on this team. And so I think that Cleveland needs to be running the ball. And Kitchens has come out, Coach Kitchens has come out and said that he will be running the ball more and take some pressure off of Baker Mayfield. But, you know, I, I kind of feel like, and you might have seen this on Hurd because Hurd was kind of saying the same thing. I've been saying the same thing all week too. It's like, dude, run the ball with Nick Chubb. Why are you Why are you having Baker Mayfield throw the ball well, 40 times that, a game when you have a back I'll like that? Why? I will tell you why. Because the, the coach doesn't have the pull or the clout, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So that means the players are running the show. And that means the fans are going to get what they think they want to see. They want to see Baker May- Mayfield right. throwing to Odell and Jarvis. By the way, what happened to Jarvis Landry, right? I know. Okay, face so on a milk it, fi- face on a milk cart in Jarvis Landry correct. this first two games. It is a bad, bad formula. You have an insecure coach that's going to be pushed around by the players and the fans, and is going to be acquiescing to their needs mm-hmm. and their opinions. Okay, which means that they're going to be doing things backwards. Now, granted, every now and again, Baker's going to hit Odell 
eight yards up and he's going to take it the yeah, rest like of he, the way. Like he did on Monday, right? Like he did, and yeah. he can do that, and he always will be able to do that, and he's phenomenal. I'm not saying he's not. I just think that the, the formula and the puzzle pieces are out of whack. Yeah, I think that I think that handing the ball to Nick Chubb, and I like the the high flying, you know, offense and all that stuff. But like you said, I don't remember if it was if it was week one or if you said this during the preseason. But you're like, they're not the 1990s Bills, you know, and they're not like they. And I agree with everything you said about Coach Kitchens. Is like he didn't have the pool. One of the things I said is, is this team, is this Browns team, are they like the 1999 Washington Redskins where they added all these pieces to an already good team? and they can run, but then everything imploded? Or are they like the 1991 Dallas Cowboys where they added, you know, some pieces and built the team, and then you have like a like a guy? And I said, you know, what I think what it comes down to is, is Freddie Kitchens more Norv Turner, or is he more Jimmy Johnson? And then we'll find out this year. And I think mm. what we're seeing in the early returns is he's more Norv Turner as a head coach. And, you know, it's obvious that they're trying to throw the ball, and, and, and they're trying to force an identity – when they have a talented running back and they if they run the ball to this guy like every like three out of every four times he touches the ball he goes for like 20 yards and a touchdown he's freaking really really good yeah. and he's being bottled up the thing is if you run the ball more then then those like the people you know they won't stack the um you know they won't uh, roll like play dime packages as often uh, Odell and Jarvis Landry and all these weapons will get more one on one looks and then you get the over the top stuff you don't just have to continuously force it down the field and so I just don't think when you're playing a team um, everybody knows about McVeigh and the offense and all that stuff but when you're playing a team against Aaron Donald and this Rams defense is pretty damn good and you're yeah. unwilling you're unwilling to run the ball. Oh. And I th- I just, I just don't, Dude, I just don't see it, man. They're gonna get out coached. They're gonna get out schemed. Mm-hmm. They're gonna be out talented. I, I swear to God, it's going to be ugly. That yeah. for me is the pick of the week. Yeah. It's going to be so ugly, and they're going to be put in their place at home. Bad. Yeah, I know. I know. Like you said, I mean, coaching advantage goes to the Rams. Quarterback advantage goes to the Rams at this point. Um, Big you know, time. I, 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 I love Nick Chubb. I think Nick Chubb physically is more talented than Gurley is. And, every, you know, the whole thing about Gurley splitting carries and all that, that that's kind of a wash, those two, in my opinion. And I, I'd probably be on the minority there. I think a lot of people would say Gurley is better. But I say Chubb is actually physically the more talented. But, again, he's being handcuffed. So then you look at the receivers. I mean, the Browns on paper, OD, ODB is better. Um, but as a unit, I would take Woods, Cup, um, and uh, and Cooks. A hundred percent, man. You know, only... hey, Aaron Donald is going to be, dude. This Baker defensive Mayfield line versus that offensive be... line. Baker Mayfield is going to know what Aaron Donald had for breakfast. You know what I mean? <laughs> all day long, every serving, man. Yeah. Sausage, bacon. He's going to be able to pick it all out. <laughs> I know. I know, man. This is going to be uh, this is going to be an interesting game. Um. Um, and that's be, what line is that again? I'm sorry, I forget. Three. Oh my God, I'm taking. If, uh, if yeah, there's another one, even just as juicy, I'm doing a two-team parlay for sure. Yeah, yeah. Talk about uh, T's option. Um, oh you know, yeah, yeah. Tease the Rams. Um, you know, down to probably six or eight or whatever. I don't even think I'm going to tease that one. That one is is so it's so beautiful. Good. It's so good that I think it's a shame to tease it. Yeah. I think <laughs> it it dwarfs it and demeans it by teasing it. Huh. <laughs> Well, we'll see, man. I know the Browns crowd will be charged up, but they turned on the Browns in Week One against the Titans. If this oh, thing... they're gonna turn real. They're gonna turn even quicker, uh-huh. dog. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you, man. I, I love I love that one. They'll be growling. That one. I mean, th- those top three picks for us: Kansas City, um, Seattle, the Rams. Um, I love those three. Um, and Kansas City maybe a little less so because I hate seven, but Kansas City's just so damn good right now. But they're uh, so damn good, man. So the, the the bottom three that we have, I like those. We agree on those in these picks, but they just th- these top three. I mean, we were looking for one game like this last week. We were having a tough time finding totally. anything we liked. Last uh, week was brutal, man. Yeah, didn't feel good at all. Not not one game stood out for me. Yeah, of the bets we made, we went one and two. But again, one of those was the Pittsburgh game. So yeah, um, we got a lucky cover, I think, at the end with um. With Denver, <laughs> what happened oh in the debacle of that game? But that was good. But, but yeah, I mean, like, uh, it, it, this is earning season now, man. I love, I love, I love this game. Uh, let's move it on, Brad. We have another one. Actually, you and I, before the show, we initially disagreed on this. I think I talked you into it. We have uh, New England at last check was minus 23 at home versus the New York Jets who are coming into town. So it's New York, uh, the Jets, plus 23 at New England. Brad and I are on New England. <laughs> This week, 
And um, I, I here's here and, and Brad and I are we talked about this last week when the line was 19 at Miami, and Brad and I were kind of split on that one. And my thought is New York, they're playing their third string quarterback this week. Um, Luke Falk is going to be playing a Bill Belichick defense. Bill Belichick, what do we know what he likes to do on defense? He likes to take the big weapons away. Who's the big weapon in New York, in New York at this point? It's Le'Veon Bell. It's Le'Veon Bell and Robbie Anderson. He's going to be able to take both of those guys away. So now you're looking to cover the spread. You're looking for either the Jets' defense to really step up against an offense that can do whatever the hell it wants whenever it wants to, or, um, or you're looking at uh, Luke Falk to hit Jamison Crowder for a lot of... Uh, <laughs> A lot of targets. I seriously, I just don't see outside of like a an egregious mistake by New England. I don't see how New York really gets above maybe six points. I think that's their ceiling, and I don't see how they hold the Patriots below thirty. I just yeah, I don't see it. I I agree. I don't see it either. I really don't. I don't. I don't see any reason why they would. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I think the only reason why they would is out of boredom by New England. And they don't, man. Tom Brady last week when they were beating, they were up by like 40-something, I think. they don't get bored. They just enjoy the hell out of it. Tom Brady was in the game. <clears throat> he was in the game throwing the ball it's with weird. five minutes it's left, weird. man. It's weird. And I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, like, Bill Belichick, like, Tom, like, come on, step it back. Like, you don't need to win by 50 here. I know, I know. It's Step it's back. Like the one shit. thing that can screw your season up is Tom yeah. Brady getting hurt. Why is he in there at a 40-point? Uh, I don't like that. It's their favorite thing in the world. I know, I know. Just beating the hell out of somebody is their favorite thing in the world. It's like they're, they're trying to get – get onto the top of everybody's power rankings or something like this is like the NCAA. yeah it's, it's it crazy. doesn't make any sense because Belichick is very smart mm-hmm. maybe he knows something that we don't about no. that strategy no maybe he doesn't I, instill I, the fear of of uh injury I don't know what it is but it's it's awkward it's I, off. I don't I don't like it I really don't like that don't but, like either. but as a gambler you know he's going to be in there maybe Bill maybe maybe Bill owed the uh owed the mafia some money or something I don't know. Maybe Keep it's in this. Yeah. Maybe it's a mentality like we're so, number one and everybody else is our bitch. And yeah. we're going to remind them of that at every turn. I know. It's like the brother that holds you down and then spits the loogie into your mouth. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what Bill Belichick is at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So let me talk about New England. So I watched that Miami game, every brutal minute of that Miami game. And um, <laughs> Antonio Brown, Brad, was already the most targeted guy on that team. And he could he walked away with a touchdown. <laughs> he could have had three more touchdowns, Antonio Brown. So this, like, this, this New England team is just so damn good. Why are you saying that? Because, like, uh, Tom Brady just missed him. It was timing. It was just unfamiliar. Oh, uh-huh. uh, he, uh, t- Antonio Brown had the separation, and uh, maybe he wasn't running the right route depth. Maybe Tom Brady just, you know, thought he was a little faster than he was. But it, basically, Antonio Brown got, I think, two or three more targets in the end zone where he had created separation. He really could have walked out with two or three touchdowns that game. And so, like, you, you add that, and the, the question to me is completely answered. Is this thing going to work in New England? It's going to work, um, Antonio Brown. All the allegations that we're saying, hey, did you hear, Brad, that um, there's a doctor in Pittsburgh who's suing Antonio Brown for not paying his medical bills? Have you heard about this one? In the lawsuit, he's also expressed um, that Antonio Brown was very um, immature and constantly farted in his face and laughed about it, so... <laughs> I know you. I knew you would enjoy that. Can't be true. <laughs> it's, it's it is true. a Pittsburgh doctor, so maybe You're he's just trying a bit. to. Maybe it's he's a like, bit. "What's that?" No, no, no. This is real. This is a real thing. You can search for it. And you can find the, the story. doctor said this. That the guy was farting and having a good old time with yeah, it. Yeah, man. Yeah, he was farting in his face and laughing about it, and then he didn't pay. It was like ten thousand dollars of uh, medical bills. <laughs> Antonio what Brown. The ultimate disrespect that is. <laughs> I know. Get the guy to bill if you fart in his face. <laughs> what do you like? What uh, like the doctor? The, the the funny thing to me is like if I'm looking at the story, I'm thinking like the doctor said he had multiple visits where he kept doing this. Why didn't he just release him as a patient, Antonio Brown? <laughs> yeah, he's constantly getting he's like sucking fart off of Antonio Brown for years. <laughs> anyway, um, so there's Antonio Brown uh, farting in everybody's face, but catching touchdowns, <laughs> I mean, farting in the NFL space. Yeah, it's bad. He's been farting in all our faces. For Nike years dropped and... him though. Nike dropped him. I heard today. Oh, oh I haven't, yeah. Uh, I haven't confirmed it, but uh... wow, that's not good for him. I'm sure that'll cost him about eighty million dollars. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Well, I don't know, forty at least, right? I have. You know those those deals are are nuts. Yeah, they are nuts. But uh, 
more so for the basketball players. I don't know that, you know. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, I don't well, I don't know. It could be a multiple multiple year, $5 million deal to year. I mean, who knows? Maybe it's $10 million. That still ain't good. Yeah. Anyway, orange mustache. Um, let's move it <laughs> on. We have San Francisco. Uh, Pittsburgh is visiting San Francisco. Pittsburgh with Mason Rudolph at quarterback. They're getting seven points against the 49ers. Brad and I are actually both taking the 49ers. Now, these last two bets, I should say that Brad and I did agree on these. And we were try- having – basically, we narrowed them down. I'll, t- I'll list all the bets that we agreed on. And uh, obviously, we're running through our top six. But the ones that we're not talking about today, Brad and I took Atlanta plus one at Indianapolis. Um we're, we like Washington plus four at home against Chicago. Um, I think Washington, I think that's an upset possibility. That's going to be a yep. low-scoring game. I think both of yep. us, Brad, I don't think either team's going to score, so I'm kind of on the under on that game. Not that I usually bet under uh, over-unders, but, yeah, that one's an interesting one. But, uh, let, yeah, let's talk about uh, San Francisco. You feel more passionately about this San Francisco game than I do, so why don't you um, why don't you say it, and I'll come in with a little devil's advocate, although, again, okay. I do agree with you that San Francisco will pull this off. Yeah, I think uh, San Francisco is on the up and up, obviously. I like Garoppolo. I think he's going to be a great, solid quarterback for sure. Um, I will give credit to my uncle Joe Dirt. He said something to me this past weekend. He said, I think we're witnessing the end and the demise of Pittsburgh as we know them. And and that was before the Roethlisberger injury. And that was before the Roethlisberger injury. He said, if we just take the veil off, and we stop looking at them like we always have as the Pittsburgh we've always known, I think what is happening is they are coming unraveled. Great players are leaving. Um, The show is getting very tired. It's getting very drama-filled. It's turning into bad relationship after bad relationship, and it's going to crumble down. And that was before Roethlisberger got injured. And I think he's right. I think that's a very real possibility. Sean? Yeah, so uh, here's here's the devil's advocate thing, and— and let me just start with this. Um, in all my fantasy football fallout, all that stuff, I'm seeing the same thing about Cleveland, uh, New Orleans, and Pittsburgh this week is run the freaking ball more, okay? So Pittsburgh has James Conner. They've been going five wide, like nonstop, losing. They lost two games, uh, obviously got uh, dominated in uh, in New England. They could have won. I think they would have won if Roethlisberger was healthy last week in Seattle, but they didn't. Um, but, you know, uh, Roethlisberger goes down. They stick with five wide with Mason Rudolph. And you have James Conner there. I'm thinking, what the hell are you doing? And now James Conner is on the injury report. Uh, reports say he says he feels fine. He's going to suit up. He's going to play. So to me in this game, the key for me is Mason Rudolph set him up for success. Run the ball. Same with Baker Mayfield. Set him up for success. Run the ball. Then you open things up if you're Pittsburgh. You open things up for James Washington to go downfield. Deontay Johnson, the young uh, receiver. Vance uh, McDonald, you run in seam routes, uh, you know, deep outs and that, those kinds of things. And, of course, Juju Smith-Schuster. Run the ball. But their offensive coordinator, coordinator is showing basically an unwillingness to kind of do that. And ever since, I think, Brad, what, like to your point— Ever since uh, Bar Fight and Todd Haley um, was not renewed, his contract wasn't renewed in Pittsburgh, it's been an issue. Um, they've been running the ball less. They'll and, and Le'Veon Bell, so there's some of that too because he's he held out last year, so he was gone. But you can't ignore the run, uh, and that's what they're doing. And I think that they're going to do this again. Now on the flip side, um, you know, if they run the ball, I think San Francisco or I think Pittsburgh will. Uh, you know, I think they'll they'll make this a game, but Pittsburgh is never really that great of a road team on top of playing their backup quarterback. Now, here's why I agree with you, Brad. Um, San Francisco's defensive line is sick. Uh, they can get rush with four. Do you remember, Brad, those uh, those Giants teams that won the Super Bowl, the first one with, like, Strahan? I think oh, Yuma yeah. was there. Oh, yeah. And they made it a nightmare for Tom Brady because they got a push with four. And if you yeah. get a push with four, all of a sudden you're, you have seven people in coverage in a passing route, okay? They have speed at linebacker, and they have Richard Sherman and, and the other defensive backs and, and safeties and everything. They're okay. I'm thinking, like, if you're, if you're San Francisco right now, we hear all the drama in Jacksonville with Jalen Ramsey. If they traded for, like, Jalen Ramsey, that would be a pretty sick team, man. That mm-hmm. would be really good, match up a little bit better with the, uh, you know, uh, you know the, the passing teams of the uh, West— that would be good, and then Kansas City is another one, Brad, that everybody's talking about might uh, you know try to trade um, mm-hmm. Jacksonville. That you know the counteraction basically, New England gets Antonio Brown, so then Kansas City goes out and gets Jalen Ramsey. Those would be two really good moves. But 
Yeah, man, I, I, I was back and forth on this one, but then I started thinking about Rudolph and them not running the ball, and San Francisco, you know, I watched them uh, basically just throttle two teams with their defensive line. It's hard, man. When, you're, when your offensive line's being dominated, and Pittsburgh's offensive line is good, so we're, I think we're going to get a little bit more information as we go forward into the season from this game. It's one of the games I like. It's one of the games that's going to be on my TV live as opposed to watching it uh, in tape afterwards. Uh, I like him, man. I like him. Yep. Plus, San Francisco yep. can run the ball. So there yep. you go. All right, man. I think our last game of the week here is where did I where did I put it? Oh yes, this was my pick. So Brad was less enamored with one, uh, this one than I was. So I'll lead off on this, Brad. Um, Cincinnati is visiting Buffalo. Cincinnati is getting six points against Buffalo. I'm taking Buffalo. Um, I like it, dude. I do. I like it. Yeah, I do. Yeah, but it, it, it it's just we don't love it as much as we love those top three picks. Sure, sure. Um, so this one is here's the thing: Cincinnati has had a hard time getting the running ball, uh, running game going. Um, they played um, obviously the last week they played San Francisco. We're talking about that defensive line; they shut them down first week. You know, this that, that was like two weeks ago at this point. I can't remember, but um, I know they got their running game. Oh, Seattle. Uh, they they got shut down by Seattle uh, in that first week of the season. It's not going to get any better. I think Buffalo might be the best defense of these three that they played. I don't think they're going to be run the, able to run the ball for squat. So now you have Buffalo's passing defense um, against, you know, John Ross, Andy Dalton, um, Tyler Eifert, use him if he plays, and um, Tyler Boyd. I yeah. think I think I think Buffalo's defense can throttle the Cincinnati offense this week. I like I said I think they're better than Seattle. I think they're better than San Francisco's defense at this point. Now their offense, um, Cincinnati hasn't shown an ability to stop the run at all, and Buffalo wants to run the ball to set up the deep pass. We saw what San Francisco did last week. I think that Josh Allen, if he can just if he can only throw one or two interceptions. I think they're they're going to be able to cover this game by at least a touchdown. I like what Buffalo's doing. Like you and I, Brad, we both started down on Buffalo, mm-hmm. and I started coming around to them early and seeing them in early action. Their defense is exceptional, and um, you know we'll see if this offense can uh, can put up some yards because Andy Dalton, I think, is throwing for four hundred yards a game right now, but he also has no running game, so it's the only thing they can do. You know, I don't know too much about the Bills, and that's the thing. I, I think I'm still looking at them through eyes of. Uh mediocrity and, and underperforming and uh, they could be something they could be and I'm guilty of not having watched them have one play this year or giving a you know what about what's going on in Buffalo right all I heard was some comment about how the quarterback said uh, there's only one team in New York and that confused the hell out of me I didn't know what he was trying to say there <laughs> I didn't get it at all and everyone thought it was real quirky and funny I was like, I'm so stupid. I have no idea what that means. At least you admit it. Yeah, thank you. So that's that's the only thing I remember hearing about Buffalo. I know they have a good defense. I just couldn't name me a player on the team. Mm. Uh, I couldn't even point to where the hell Buffalo is on a map, which is probably why I don't understand the New York bit. (laughs) And that's where I'm coming from. It's in New York. It's very close to Toronto. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's good. As, the, as the faith in our audience dissipates um let me talk about uh my top six daily fantasy sleepers this week at quarterback i actually like matt stafford i like this matchup uh this week i think that um they will get some passing yards against this philadelphia defense which has shown um, an ability to give up passing yards. I, I I know Matt Stafford. I know this is going to be an emphasis in the run game in Detroit this season, but game planning this week, I think they will throw the ball. I like Matt Stafford at 5,900. Uh, Marlon Mack is at 5,800. That's a travesty. He's a three-down back. Um, I know he had a tough sledding against Tennessee, but Tennessee's a good defense, man. Don't don't be so discouraged. I think uh, Devin Singletary will be more involved in the Buffalo running game. He's at 4,300. I like him a lot as well. Randall Cobb with Michael Gallup out, I think will get some targets in Dallas. Mm-hmm. And then my last one, um, Jason Witten here. Did I do another? I think I just did another pick five on our pick six podcast. But Jason Witten, Brad, um, mm-hmm. is at uh, thirty seven hundred dollars, and uh, you know he's he's get, finding the end zone every week with Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott loves him, and I do have a six written down. It's just in hieroglyphics. I couldn't read it. Demarcus Robinson in uh, in uh, Kansas City. He's only at fifty two hundred. Uh, we do think that this Kansas City offense will be able to score against the Baltimore Ravens. So there you go. There's my pick six. There's our pick six. Once again, just to sum up the show, we're picking Kansas City minus seven, Seattle 
minus 4.5, the Rams minus 3, New England minus 23, San Francisco minus 7. We're taking all favorites this week, which is rare. Uh, but there you go. We think we're going to get some get paid. We're going to make some money. It is earning season. We're in week three, and things only get better for here from here for me and Brad. So I can't wait to cash in and talk to everybody else, uh, out there next week. So go out, make some bets, pick our six, and get paid.